Competition between AMD and NVIDIA has made things a lot more interesting in the 300 to 500 pound segment of the GPU market. But there's one more launch that NVIDIA has up its sleeve, a more higher end card, the RTX 2080 Super. Coming in at a price point of $699 or £669 here in the UK, this is a somewhat less interesting launch purely because there isn't really any real competition from AMD unless the Radeon 7 were to receive a pretty substantial price drop. From a consumer standpoint, the 2080 Super actually makes a bit more sense in terms of its name than the 2070 Super. Now the 2070 Super was based on a sort of cut down version of 2080, so no real relevance to the 2070, but 2080 Super is what the name suggests. It's basically a pimped up faster version of 2080. This means that it's based on the same TU-104 GPU, but the difference is that it's fully enabled which brings a roughly 4% increase in all of the core counts. Clock speeds are also up, with the boost speed up by 6% compared to a stock RTX 2080, although remember this is only 15 MHz higher than the RTX 2080 Founders Edition, which came overclocked, whereas the 2080 Super Founders Edition runs at stock speeds. That said, the higher power limit, which is now in line with the 2080 Ti, should see the boosting hitting higher frequencies when you're actually in-game. The final piece of the puzzle is the memory, which NVIDIA has overclocked by about 11% to 15.5 gigabits per second, making it the highest and fastest GDDR6 on the market. Now, I've often wondered why we don't see more memory overclocking, so this is great, and hopefully we're going to see partners pushing the memory even higher. The card design is carried over pretty much exactly from RTX 2080 Founders Edition. Uh, the only difference really is that they've got this green super brand in here and also on the backplate. Now, I've said it before, I'm not really a fan of this. I think it kind of spoils the neutral tone of the card, but it is what it is. Thankfully, in most other areas, the card is brilliant. The build quality is really good. It's a really solid card, and it's also nice and compact. It sticks to a dual slot form factor, and it's not too long, coming in at just under 270 millimeters. It's the standard array of connectors. You've got three display ports, and these are the ones that you'll need to use if you're gonna use G-Sync or any FreeSync monitors. You also get a HDMI 2 port, and one USB-C port for virtual link connectivity. In terms of power plugs, we have a six pin and eight pin connection combo, and this is perfectly sufficient for the 250 watt TDP. And for cooling, it's the same dual fan design on top of a vapor chamber, and you also get metal contact plates along the whole of the card, which take care of the memory and the VRMs. We've also spoken to Nvidia and confirmed that the RTX 2080 Super is using the exact same board design inside, and this means that you're looking at an 8 plus 2 phase configuration. It should also mean that any water blocks compatible with the RTX 2080 Founders Edition will be directly compatible with this, but it is worth checking with the manufacturer of the block that you have. Just a quick word on the benchmarks. If you want to see all of the results, we've got six games and three resolutions and 11 graphics cards in the graphs on the website. But here we try and keep things a little more concise and take you through the most relevant comparisons. At 1080p, RTX 2080 Super Performance is excellent as expected. We saw average frame rates peak at 141 FPS in The Division 2, with the majority of games averaging 100 FPS or higher. 1440p is the sweet spot, just as it was for RTX 2080. Average performance is between 66 and 111 FPS, and even in the punishing Metro Exodus benchmark, the 99th percentile is above 40 FPS. It does drop to 35 FPS once we enable ray tracing, but actual in-game performance in this title is higher than in the benchmark. Plus, you have the option here of turning on DLSS to make up some performance, assuming you find the resultant image quality acceptable. Nvidia does pitch this card as 4K capable, and there is some merit to that. In Far Cry New Dawn, we see 52 FPS on the 99th and 65 on average, but Metro Exodus falls below 30 FPS on the 99th, and Total War Three Kingdoms does as well. Therefore, our advice is to steer clear of 4K gaming here, or you'll be dialing down settings and itching for an upgrade sooner than you'd like. Card to card, Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p is pretty representative of what we see on average. The 2080 Super beats the 2080 Founders by 6.5% overall, and you can expect that figure to be a bit higher compared to an RTX 2080 at stock speed. The 2080 Ti is comfortably ahead by 17% overall, and the 2080 Super is only 13% faster than 2070 Super across our games. Assassin's Creed Odyssey at 1440p is a good demonstration of AMD not really having anything to compete at this price point. 
The RTX 2080 Super is 18% faster than Radeon 7 overall. And even though for the Radeon RX 5700 XT, this is one of the better titles, the new Nvidia card is still 26% faster overall. The card slots in where expected in terms of power consumption, and RTX 2080 Super is considerably more efficient than the AMD Radeon 7. The temperature graph is also unsurprising, with a difference over ambient that's right in line with the cards that share the same cooler. At an ambient temperature of 24 degrees, the card was plateauing at 73 degrees Celsius. In terms of frequencies, we saw very little signs of throttling, with the card quickly settling to 1920 MHz and holding steady. Fan speeds peak at just over 1900 RPM, which is in line with the RTX 2080 founders. As usual, overclocking results should be taken with a pinch of salt, as it's very much chip dependent. Still, with power and temperature limits maxed out, we added 125 MHz to the core, which saw the card boost to 2040 MHz under load. We also hit a memory speed of 17.9 gigabits per second, a solid 15% overclock. Now this saw us improve performance by about 7 or 8%, which is always nice, but as you can see, the 2080 Ti is not really phased. Now out of the original RTX lineup, it was always the 2080 that seemed the weakest one to me. It didn't really have enough performance to justify the price jump over 2070, it couldn't quite manage 4K gaming, and it also didn't have the title of being the fastest card in the world, like the 2080 Ti. Now that the stack has been refreshed with the super parts, sadly for this card, the situation is kind of the same as it was for RTX 2080. In terms of pricing, you're looking at a 1.4x uplift over the RTX 2070 Super, and yet performance is a mere 13% higher. And that's just terrible value, even by Nvidia's RTX standards. When we look at 4K and ray tracing tests, the advantage of the RTX 2080 Super is a little bit more, but still nowhere near enough to justify the big price difference. In terms of the card design itself, the Founders Edition still holds up under scrutiny in terms of thermals and noise, but remember, it's exactly the same design as the RTX 2070 Super, so there's no advantage for this card at all. In short, if your budget is big enough to stretch this far for a GPU, you should save your money, get the RTX 2070 Super, overclock it to make up some of the difference, and put the extra cash towards something else in your system. But what I think the best option would be is to wait and see what the third parties can do about the design of the RX 5700 XT, because there's a lot of room for improvement on this cooler, and if the value is right, you could have a really good card on your hands. So that's it for this review. Give us a comment below to let us know what you think. Give us a like, a subscribe, and we'll see you next time. We're good? Cool. Competition in the GPU market has just brought some words to my mouth. And in terms of calling, Nvidia again carries over the vapor chamber design from the 2080 and 2080 Ti super <laughs> <laughs> And for cooling, NVIDIA sticks to its vapor chamber design carried over from 2080 Super and Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> no, I'm gonna mention the clip thing again. Ah, f it.